What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Exciting things are happening here today. I'm going to throw some style into the lighting system in this room, take out this old binary switch and install a new dimmer switch. Let's get into it. All right, as I remove the screws to this cover plate, let me remind you that changing the switch to your lighting system is a relatively quick and easy way to add some style into your house. But I must say, when I went out and bought the switch, I didn't do too much research. I went out to the closest big box store and I got a switch that looked simple to use and wasn't too mm, displeasing to the eyes. So the one I ended up getting was the Leviton Decora Sure Slide Slide Dimmer with preset switch. This switch has four wires coming out of it because you can use it in a single pole application or a three-way application. You can use it on dimmable LED bulbs or complex fluorescent, which I think they refer to as CFL bulbs too. And of course, incandescent. Those old school tungsten power draining bulbs. Before I work on any kind of wiring in my house, the first thing I do is terminate the electricity to that circuit at the breaker panel. Okay, on with the installation. Fresh out the package, let's look at these wires. This first red one here, that one's gonna go to our load. The black one here, that's the hot one. This green one is gonna be wired up to our ground. And this, uh, this last one here, this one is for three-way switch applications, which we're not using here, so we can disregard that. Uh, I don't think I spoke about tools yet, so let's start talking about tools. So you're gonna wanna approach this project with a flat head. Might as well get a Phillips. And if you're in the Great White North, have yourself a Robertson too. Have some electrical tape, some wire cutters, maybe some pliers, and uh, that's it to start. You may not have to use all these tools, but it's just good to have everything nearby just in case you need another tool, you don't have to waste time. Anyways, as you can see here, I'm here struggling with these slotted screws. The person who owned this house before me decided it was a great idea to paint over these screws. And now I gotta scrape a little bit of paint out of the slot so I can fit my flathead screwdriver in there properly, get some good traction. But anyways, it's two screws alone that hold this switch in. Once I remove these two screws, I can pull the switch forward from the wall and access the wiring. Alright, finally, I got it out. Alright, let me pull this thing forward here and show you what we got behind. Three wires, which is surprising, I was expecting more. Two wires here on this side, one wire on this end. This one seems to be the load and these two seem to be the source. So there are ground wires in this switch box. There are these ones right here. I was expecting to see them wired up to the switch, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Anyways, these wires, instead of being connected to the screw, they're in the back here like a clamp style. So to remove these wires, you have two choices. You can just cut them out if you're never gonna use the switch again, or you could find something small and narrow like an electronic screwdriver that you can force in this opening here to release the clamping force and the wire should come right out. And because I don't like to do things the easy way, clearly, I chose to use my electronic screwdriver to force these wires out of the clamp. And because all three of these wires are the same color, I'm gonna mark them so that I don't mix them up. Luckily for me, the last of these wires is secured to the switch with the screw, which makes it so much easier to remove. Okay, so the first wires I'm gonna connect are gonna be the hot wires. This one black one to these two black ones that were attached to the same terminal on the switch. And as you can see here, as far as connecting the wires go, it's just a matter of bringing all the bare wires together, twisting them together, and then twisting on your moret. It's a good idea to make sure you twist everything the same direction so that nothing comes undone while you're doing it. And now, because I like to be super safe when it comes to electrical wiring, I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around both the moret and the wires. That way I know this moret is not gonna come off accidentally when I push everything in into the switch box. Up next, I'm gonna connect the load wire. This is the wire that's gonna bring electricity to the light when you hit that switch. We're gonna connect this ground wire too. Even though the last switch didn't have a ground wire connected, this switch clearly asks for it, so we're gonna do it. So the wiring part of this installation is now complete. Now it's time to shove all these wires into the switch box. And since we didn't have to use this last wire here, 
I'm just gonna terminate it with some electrical tape. Better safe than sorry. Screwing the light switch into the wall is relatively straightforward. The only task here is making sure it ends up straight. And the cover plate is going to screw into these holes here and here. So here take note of the range of the slider on the switch and the actual on off button. And now it's test time. Yeah! It's important to note that these are LED bulbs. So I'm going to remove this cover to show you guys the bulbs I have installed here. Not CFL or incandescent. Here are the specs for you to see. And I'll just reinstall it now and we'll start the testing. I'm going to split the screen for the testing. In real time I'll show you how the bulbs light up when you hit the switch because it isn't exactly instantaneous. There is some sort of delay. And as you can see, this dimmer paired up with these two bulbs, the delay is absolutely minimal. I mean, this kind of delay is pretty much insignificant, at least for me. Okay, let's move the slider now and see how that works. Okay, that was interesting. There it was again. When the slider is all the way down, the light is supposed to be at its lowest intensity. But when we start to move the slider up, we see a drop in intensity before we start to see an increase. And vice versa when we decrease the slider position. So I'm going to take the cover plate back off because I want to show you guys something. This dimmer has a mode selection switch built into it. And you can use this switch to have your dimmer perform at its best in conjunction with the light you have it working with. Anyways, it says for bulbs that do not turn on smoothly or inconsistently perform when turning on, set to mode B. We'll see what that looks like in a bit. You can also use this switch to program your preset light level. For example, if you start using your dimmer right away and you notice it's flickering at the lowest level or it doesn't come on, you can actually use this mode selection switch to program the light levels at the high end and the low end. There's also something in the instructions about this SSL7A which I can't find any information on and I must say it's very frustrating. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this switch to the right side, B, and we'll do the test all over again. All right, let's begin. Looks like the same amount of delay turning it on and off. So let's talk about that point where the light seems to get less intense after you start increasing the slider from its lowest position. It's clear that the mode selection switch did not remedy this issue. I'm not even sure it's supposed to. For me, it seems to be a little bit more noticeable with the selection switch over to the right. But maybe it's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Okay guys, I got a bonus for you. We're gonna do one more test, and this time it's gonna be on a different light. Now in this room, I have this same Leviton Decora Plus switch and this LED light. But the experience I'm getting with this pairing is a lot different than the other one, specifically when it comes to turning it on. If this light has been sitting off for about 30 minutes or more and the slider is all the way down, when I come to turn it on, there's a significant delay. It's like two seconds or so. But when I had this light paired with a binary switch, there was no delay. Oh, and by the way, I have the mode selection switch set to B on this one. So when pairing a dimmer switch and a bulb together in the same circuit, just remember that some combinations will work better than others. As for this pairing, other than when initially turning it on, I like the way it gradually increases and decreases its light intensity. I like it way more than the previous pairing. This one just feels smoother. Although it might be hard to tell through this camera, this light also suffers from minor fluctuations in light intensity at the low end of the scale. Now here's another annoyance. According to the instructions, Leviton has a list of compatible LED bulbs to go with their dimmers, but when you go to the address, this is all you find. So out of the two setups that I've shown you guys today, this setup right here with the Star Raker light, this one performs better when it comes to dimming. But when it comes to turning on, the other setup works better. It's hard for me to say which one I like more. One thing I do like about this switch is the physical design. I find the construction makes it obvious as to how it's supposed to work, as I've seen some dimmers that weren't exactly obvious. Some dimmer switches have these little thin sliders off to the side. You almost have to take an extra second to think about how it operates before you actually try to operate it. However, my wife has a different opinion. She doesn't think it's sleek enough. So in the end, it's down to personal preference, like always. 
Okay, so the big question now is, what am I going to do with this switch? Am I gonna return it and try another one or am I gonna keep it? Well, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna go through the trouble of uninstalling it and buying new ones. The fluctuations of the light at the low end aren't a massive deal breaker for me personally. The price point was nice, it's simple to use, and after all, it's just going in my children's room anyway. In the future, I might try something more stylish, more up to the times, maybe a touch sensitive one, but I'm not really keen on the smart ones. Well, that's it for this video. If you like the material, please consider subscribing, like it, and share. See you next time.